Yo, 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 what is the crack? I hope everybody is doing well. This is Kieran with another Spearhead tutorial. This one's going to be another logo tutorial and it's going to be another death metal adjacent style logo tutorial, but it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be kind of a gnarly, spiky, symmetrical, um, modern death metal logo. We're going to go back to the roots here and go for an old school style, uh, a la death, and uh, gruesome, that kind of style logo. Uh, we're going to do this by building up um, from an old English font which I'll uh, leave a link to in the description and uh, we're gonna include loads of drips and like gnarly medieval weapons and give it a real old school kind of brutal kind of texture and it's gonna look sick. So this has been pretty highly requested so if we can get uh, say 50 comments and 100 likes on this I'm gonna be absolutely delighted so uh, shoot down in the comments and let's go. Right, so we're opening Photoshop here and we're gonna go for the usual, which is an A3 artboard. That is 4961 by 3508 pixels at 300 DPI and I've put it into a horizontal orientation there. Now you can see I'm playing around with some medieval uh, weapon images here that I've gotten from Envato Elements. This is not sponsored, but I have been using Envato recently and it is really good. These 3D um, models that you can play around with are fantastic. So I'll leave a little link to them down in the description. So uh, I've typed out my word, Firewalls, um, in Old English, it's a free font, I will leave a link to that as well, you can play around with it. It's a classic, you know, you've seen it in pretty much every every uh, hardcore and kind of metal adjacent logo for the last 50 years has been using Old English or black letter style fonts and uh, they really look the business. So here what I'm doing is I've just been moving each individual letter, I've rasterized my, my font, moved my letters into kind of give it a bit of a bit of flow and a bit of movement because I, I don't want this to be a static logo I want it to be like kind of up and down and kind of like I'm kind of lining them up by the uh, the serifs coming off the tops and the bottom of the letter so I'm kind of like you know lining them diagonally and stuff to give it like a natural kind of feeling and now I'm just kind of playing with my skew and kind of uh, perspective to give it a little bit more movement and I think it's looking nice so once I'm happy with that I take my uh, medieval weapons and I'm just kind of like you know chopping and changing these nip talking playing with perspective cutting bits off I take one blade off a sight and use the handle of, it, of the other because um, uh, which is pretty handy in Vado is very handy for that just having multiple models you can you can uh, download the angle and uh, chop and change as you please so then I have once I was happy I put the mace in for I I put the sight in for the L and I kind of tilted them and stuff and then I'm just like uh, made them black and white with a uh, control what is it a uh, shift control alt and B is uh, ma will make your layer black and white straight away so I whack the contrast up in them and put a black stroke on them to give them a bit of an illustrated kind of feeling and then uh, for a little bit more movement in my lettering I went I merged everything onto one layer and then I went into liquify and I'm just kind of pulling and kind of pushing things to give it a little bit more of an organic flow I, as I said I don't want this to be static I want it to have a nice little kind of like um, oblique form and kind of movement to it so once I'm happy with my base layer I'm gonna trace over my letters with my lasso tool which I'm just then filling this section with black so when you're doing this um, sort this type of thing, especially drawn over like you know a, a, an old English um, style font, you're going to really want to accentuate the serifs and the ascenders and descenders on the, the high face itself because the form is already there. As I said, it's it's been done probably since you know the uh, Gutenberg Bible in God knows when that was the 1500s or something. So this. This style just looks uh, correct to our eye no matter what so don't kind of like deviate too far from it you want to kind of use the the form of the letters themselves and then just draw over them with your new letters uh, with your different kind of like spikes and kind of chinks in the armor and damage and you know you don't want to start from scratch here you want to use your, your typeface as a, as a nice base so once you're happy with that you can delete the uh, original fonts below and just start to kind of like you know twist and kind of warp and uh, play around with your perspective and, and skew and stuff uh, on your your new layers or your new letters that you've drawn um, just so, to make sure you're totally happy with, with your kind of flow here. Once you've got that down you can kind of start drawing over the, uh, the illustrated elements. Uh, I want these to kind of look a little bit more cartoony than just like the, the photographs themselves if you get me or the 3D models I should say. So I've kind of given them a rough kind of uh, trace over and then kind of started messing around on my levels to bring uh, the blacks out a lot kind of harder and the whites up a lot harder as well. 
could also have achieved this through uh, just the uh, brightness contrast sliders. So now I've taken my letters and I've inverted them and put like a, a small stro uh, inner stroke, uh, rasterized that, then inverted it again and put an outer stroke of black, which has given it the, the white and black kind of outline that you can see here, which is, is featured in so many kind of heavy metal and death metal logos. Once I was happy with that, I rasterized it all and I selected only the internal black parts. I copied and pasted them and then uh, put a small bevel on it to give it that kind of like raised kind of 3D effect, then rasterize that and put another black stroke on it, an internal black stroke. And this kind of breaks up the, each, each individual part of the letters and the uh, kind of 3D effect we're doing. I duplicated it and uh, with shift and then down, put my lower layer below, uh, down 10 pixels to give it an extra bit of depth. Underneath all of these layers, I have created a new layer and I just started making some webs and some drips. Now, like webbing is pretty easy. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to kind of like draw a web from a little spike connecting to another little spike, if you get me. And then uh, I'm just like flicking down some drips off them to give it a, a, an even more kind of nasty feeling. And once I was happy with them, I merged my drips and my webs onto one layer so you can control them a lot, a lot nicer. Uh, now that we're happy with this, I have merged all of my features onto one layer. You should be saving as you go. Uh, this was me banging this out in about an hour or so. It is pretty rough and ready, and I wasn't really... Um, I'm not displaying very many good habits here, but uh, I'm sure you'd excuse me for the sake of the video. So yeah, I just kept my spearhead uh, white and black textures, and I started throwing them over the layers. Um, once I was happy with them, merge them, select the um, image layer below by pressing Control and clicking on the thumbnail, then selecting inverse and deleting all the unwanted texture outside the layers themselves. So yeah, I'm kind of leaving a little bit of splattery stuff kind of on the outsides, because as I said, I want this to be kind of like old school and rough and ready, and uh, I think it really works a treat in this kind of style. Uh, so once we're happy with that, I have merged them all onto the same layer, and keeping this small, because I want to put some noise on it and have the noise come out quite big. Then once I've put maybe about 24 on monochromatic noise on the logo, I blow it up to a full size, to A3, then I go into filter, then I go into stamp and uh, you can play around with this. This is in my Xerox tutorial, which I'll link there at the top right hand side of your screen. And basically what this will do, it'll just it'll flatten everything into like a nice um, black and white logo and uh, really merge all our details together. Once I'm kind of happy with this, I then just kind of nip tuck, go over things one last time and uh, refine the edge. Uh, just to make sure it's like nice and solid afterwards which you can bring this into Illustrator and give it a live trace just to make a vector of it if needs be if this is for a client You will need to do that, but if it's for yourself, you probably won't and yeah, it's kind of looking the business This really really looks the part so job done So there we have it a nice classic old-school death metal style logo Built up from a free font, uh, some different assets and grits and textures and a few little tricks along the way. Now there was quite a lot in this, like uh, as you can see there's probably about 10 different elements that have gone into making this logo. So again if you have any questions don't hesitate to give me a shout, I'll be more than happy to help. And um, for those of you who are new to my channel please consider giving me a subscribe on giving out free assets with every tutorial which will hopefully help you with all of your artwork. And as you can see, like this logo really looks the business. This style has really coming back in. You can see it in a lot of hardcore adjacent music, as I said, death metal. But you also see it a lot in, in kind of hip hop and even the uh, streetwear brands. You know, like this aesthetic is for everyone. You know, let's let's make the metal kind of like style become mainstream because stuff like this is far more interesting looking than you know your your usual flat design that we see far too much of. And I always, always bear that in mind, like when you're working in this kind of style, it doesn't have to be pigeonholed just to, to metal and kind of punk. Like, we can really use this for anything. I, I was joking with some uh, fellow metal designers this week saying, I can't wait to see like a football team with a death metal logo. That's when we know we've cracked it, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, thanks a million for checking this out. You're all absolute legends. I hope everyone is happy and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Nice one.